Rob, how you doing, man? It's been a while since I've had the pleasure of talking with you. And just so much going on since you were at down in Hoover at SEC Media Days. And so where do you want to start? Do you want to start NBA? Do you want to start <laughs> SEC? Do you want to start OU in Texas? I will let you have the floor to pick. Oh, my gosh. There's so much going on. I'm great to be with you, by the way, Drew. <laughs> uh, and great to be with you guys. And, um yeah, man, there's there's so much happening. I, let's start with football because uh, I'm excited. I, I can't believe that the NFL preseason starts on Thursday, and uh, we're in camps now, and uh, we got college football starting here in a month, and uh, it's that time of year. You know, you go to Hoover, and when you come back, everything gets going. I went on vacation for a week and, and uh, missed a whole lot, and now I'm back and uh, ready to ready to get cooking. College football starts, and basketball gets started. So, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's the calm before the storm right now, and the storm is coming. Yeah, storm is definitely coming, and it's been a pretty big – it's got to be a pretty big storm because the month of July might have been the busiest uh, list season, Mount Rushmore season of all time where, you, you, <laughs> you know, you know, everybody always plans these big July shows. We'll get to it in July. We'll get to it in July, and there's no way anybody got to any of them. So with college football no. – uh, free, uh Practice is starting this week. Who and we had Miles Brendan already come out with an injury before practice even start. How do you think that's going to affect LSU and the SEC West? Well, you know, LSU Ed Orgeron said that the quarterback is going to be a, a battle uh, for the position, but uh, you have to assume that Brendan was the guy that was leading the charge. But um, you know, I, I guess it's wide open. You know, LSU is an interesting team this year because they're coming off last year's hangover of their national championship. And now, uh, you know, this year, obviously, so much more is expected from this team. And the one thing they got to do is figure out the quarterback. They, they're they loaded again at skill positions. They're loaded again on defense. It's a team that should make a comeback and, and a team that should be very good. But they've got to figure out the quarterback. And, um, you know, Trying to trying to replace Joe Burrow from a couple of years ago certainly is, is a tall task for any team. But for LSU, you know, like a lot of teams in the SEC this year, that's the one thing I really learned from Hoover this year was quarterback play. You know, so many question marks. And when, when you're talking about the top quarterback in the SEC and, and you're talking about Alabama's quarterback, Bryce Young, and, and a guy who's never taken a snap. Mm. So, um, you know, it, it, it's a big question mark around the league. And, you know, whoever can answer those questions the best, uh, you know, can have a lot of success this year. But you look up and down the conference, and, and there are so many teams with quarterback questions, and LSU being one of them. So, um, you know, have to see how it plays out, see how this injury turns out, and see what the, they decide to do going forward with the quarterback. But really, like a few teams, I mean, Texas A&M's in that same boat. You know, they're a quarterback mm -hmm. away from potentially being a national championship contender. And do you have the right guy in place? And, you know, not having preseason games, just going from camp, going into the season, you know, that's a tough task. And those are huge, huge question marks uh, for those teams. You know, you look at Texas A&M, and they're a team that's ranked in the top six in the country, mm -hmm. yet they have that question at quarterback. So, you know, do they have the guy? Do they have the right guy? Because you don't have time to suddenly, you know, figure it out three games into the season. You have to figure it out before the season starts. And which teams are able to do that, they're the ones that are going to have the success. Yeah, obviously, I think most people still believe this is Alabama's league to lose, but you do still kind of wonder what yeah. Bryce Young is going to bring to the table. But let's be honest, there's been a lot less talented quarterbacks win national championships at Alabama. Pilot, well, probably the most. And it's, and it's Alabama. Yeah. It's Alabama, Drew. I mean, <laughs> right. of all the teams I'm not really concerned about, it's them, uh, even, even with the quarterback mm. question. Um, you, you just They just reload. And it, it's amazing to me. Every year, there are a couple of things that are automatic every year in sports talk radio. One, we talk about the injuries in sports and how it's worse than it's ever been before. <laughs> when in actuality, it's, it's, it's not. It's the same every year. Uh, you know, preseason, this year, in the next few weeks, 
we're going to talk about how there are more injuries in the NFL preseason than we <laughs> ever have seen before. That is true. That's just frankly not true. It just happens every single year. Um, the other thing is Alabama's, you know, they lost too many guys to the pros and they lost too many coaches. All right, well, it happens every single <laughs> year. So, and what happens? They just reload. And so that that's one team that I'm I'm not concerned about. That's one quarterback I'm not concerned about because, Anytime you get concerned about Alabama, they quickly change your mind when the season starts. And I, I suspect that'll be the case again for them this year. Um, you know, th- those are two things that you hear all the time. And every year, those questions are answered. And uh, so, Drew, don't fall into that trap, Drew. I'm when NFL not players to. start to fall, don't fall into that <laughs> trap of it being worse than any other year because it's just not. Uh, it just happens. You're very true. I mean, I don't know if any truer words have ever been spoken the cliches and things that happen every single year uh on sports talk radio but obviously sitting here in the natural (laughs) state there's some question marks but a lot of improvement how do you think what do you think um kind of an outsider's perspective uh expectation is for and a successful year for sam Pittman in year two here at arkansas well i i think it's just a matter of what you define as successful because that schedule is just brutal. Just brutal. Brutal. I mean, they could win two games this year, three games this year, and be a better football team. Um, so, so I don't know. I, I don't know what you, you, you know, what what you want to put on. If, if you want to put on a number for success, I think it's very difficult to do just because of that schedule. I mean, there's no team in the country that's going through a harder gauntlet than what the Razorbacks are going to go through this year. So. You know, I, I think what you want to see from them is you you want to you want to see them make uh, you want to see them make strides. You want to see them be competitive uh, like they were last year. I mean, Sam Pittman last year was looked at as a guy who could be coach of the year, and what they go three and seven. Yeah, um, and and we're talking about possibly coach of the year because they were competitive. They were in games. They gave everybody trouble, and heck, they had a couple of games that really should have gone their way, and they could have been a five hundred team. So. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know if 500 is even realistic for that football team this year, but if they can be competitive, they're not going to be an easy out. And I think show signs of improving, uh, that, that would be good enough. Mm-hmm. I, and I think that would be successful. I, it, it's, it, that's, the, that's the one team I think in the SEC that you can't really put a win total on a level of success this year just just because they are i mean they're, they're a far way away they just are mm. and you know in and under this new coaching staff as well and, and last year to show how competitive they could be in year one of sam Pittman, i think was encouraging and you just want to grow on that and and be more competitive maybe win a game that you're not supposed to win um win the ones that you're supposed to win and, and maybe steal one or two somewhere else and and maybe you can get the six, but um, it, it's going to be very difficult for them. But I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. He's, he's such a likable guy and a likable coach. And, you know, I, I remember years ago when Brett Bielema was the coach, and, and, and I think one of the things that stood out about him, you know, he wasn't able to win consistently. Mm-hmm. He wasn't able to get enough players. But what he did was he had his team believing in him, and and that was a positive sign. And I think Sam Pittman's done that already in year one. He's got a team that believes in him, a team that's bought in, and a team that's going to give great effort and a team that's going to be competitive. So I think he's got that figured out. Now it's a matter of getting more players and in and, and this tough SEC West and trying to you know compete with the, the top dogs. It, it takes a long time, and it's going to take a long time I wouldn't expect it this year, but I, I, I think we'll see improvement from a year ago. And I think encouragement is what you're looking for with the Arkansas Razorbacks. Mm, I don't think anybody in the natural state would disagree with you. I think it's one of those, it's a feel type of season, whether things go your way or not on the scoreboard. If you feel like you're competitive, if you feel like you're getting better game in and game out, I think most people fans will accept that we're talking with rob fisher grizzly sideline yeah. reporter pre and post game host on bailey sports radio host of the odds couple on grind city media <sighs> you got a long list of stuff you do my friend yeah <laughs> uh, yeah yeah also do a baseball podcast now called infield flies when'd you start that one Cubs and braves started uh 
after the All Star break, uh, we started it. I guess, or maybe the week before the All Star game uh, started it, and uh, yeah, we've uh, we've been doing that, and that's been a lot of fun talking about. I know there are a lot of Cardinal fans there, and uh, so yeah, if you want some baseball fix, infield fly, the name of that podcast as well. And then I host a podcast with Brevin Knight called Night Court. Night Court. So I forgot about I that am, one too. <laughs> I'm quickly becoming the pod father uh, in Memphis. <laughs> you, you really are there, Rob. Um, do you <laughs> want to get your opinion on Texas OU? And it's not really of how they're going to fit, but when do they fit? Because I, I've been saying all week and last week, as soon as you know Texas OU say that they're going to honor their commitment and that they won't join the SEC to 2025, it's just ridiculous to me. And, and Texas president even backed it up today saying that, they plan to be here through 2025. There's no way that's re- realistic, right? They they joined the SEC before then. My expectation is Texas and Oklahoma are in Hoover next year for SEC Ooh. media days, and and they will begin playing the SEC next year. I mean, to to me, their their commitment to staying on board is is like a commitment to a coach. Uh, when ownership gives that dreaded commitment to a coach, it usually signals the end. Mm. Uh, and, and I think this is a commitment to a conference that is ultimately signaling the end. Uh, they, I don't think the Big 12 will want them around. Uh, the reports today about Bob Bowlesby, commissioner of the Big 12, you know, in discussions with the Pac-12 about the potential alliance with scheduling or merging mm. or whatever they can do. Uh, I think just kind of brainstorming to figure out what, what's the best course of action next for the Big 12. And, you know, Big 12 just can't sit around and wait uh, for four years and allow, you know, their two biggest bell cows to, to basically just sit there as you know, lame duck teams. I mean, they, they can't allow that. They've got to be aggressive. They've got to be, well, it's too late to be proactive. It's now time to be reactive, mm. and and they need to be reactive as soon as possible to try and keep their league together, because you're going to have other conferences. You know, with the SEC going to 16, you're going to have the ACC potentially poach teams from the Big 12, like a, maybe a West Virginia, uh, possibly. Um, you're going to have the Pac-12 want to poach teams from the Big 12. You might have the Big 10 want to poach teams from the Big 12, and the problem is there aren't many teams left that look attractive in the big 12. So if you take away the most attractive teams that are left, what are you going to be left with? So I, I, I th- and, and I think if other teams then elect to leave and go to other conferences, well, what's the point of Texas and Oklahoma even staying put? Mm-hmm. So I, I expect the move to be made by next year. I'd be surprised if it's not, but there's no way they're staying until 2025. No chance that that happens. I'm 100% with you. Rob, I appreciate you joining us. We're up against the break, but uh, thanks for joining us. We'll have to have you on again soon, all right? Drew, anytime, man. Great to hear from you. Thanks.